Good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Susie Anetta, Editor-in-Chief of Design Anthology, and it's my great pleasure to be hosting this evening's talk, which is the fourth instalment of the Cola Bold Live Talk series here in Asia. I have three guests joining me this evening, uh, but before I introduce them, I'd like to pass to Angel Yang, who is Vice President, or President, sorry, of Kitchen and Bath Asia Pacific at Cola Company. Over to you, Angel. Good evening, everyone. I'm Angel Yang from Cola Company. I'm excited to see all of you here again. This is the fourth virtual Cola Boat Talk in Asia. We have received a very encouraging feedback with over 4,000 viewers from over 20 regions joined the previous talks featuring renowned architecture and interior designers. With 147 years rich heritage, Cola Company is always in the leading age of design and innovation. We believe this Cola Boat Talk is a platform to bring new insights and inspiration to architectures and the designers, to share and to be inspired. Our topic today focuses on the future of hospitality design. We envision a future that will be changed a great deal after COVID-19 pandemic, and we are eager to explore the changes with all of you. Innovative technology has always played a very crucial role in trendsetting. It could help to bring about a more sustainable environment and enhance comforts. Ultimately, changes and in innovations are intended to strive for the well-being for the guests who touched by the hospitality experience. With our leading edge solutions, Cola is devoted to partner with you to create a bathroom routine that gives their guests better experience. This perspective elevates Cola's role in empowering you to venture beyond the appearance of a space and to curative well-being on a much broader scale. Today, it's our great honor to welcome Mr. Guy Hewitt from Sixth Sense and Mr. Stefan Lomberg from Arco Hotels to share with us their ideas about the future hospitality design. Sixth Sense Luxury Resorts and Spa are created with unique style with authentic personnel and sustainability elements. Today, Mr. He will share how Sixth Sense provides their guests all the possibility of wellness with a very holistic view. Moreover, we learn more from Mr. Lomba how our code, the world leading hospitality group with 5,000 hotels worldwide, sees the future of the hotel design and the way they implement it across their hotel brands. With that, I will pass the floor to our honorable speakers. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Thanks, Angel. As you mentioned, uh, we have Stephen Lombard, who is Vice President of Design Asia Pacific for Design and Technical Services for Accor. We're also joined by Guy Haywood, Chief Operating Officer from Six Senses Hotels, Resorts and Spas, and they'll both be presenting this evening. After their presentations, uh, we will have Annie Sim joining us for a roundtable conversation. Annie is Director of Global Projects and Specifications and Sales Operations at Cola Company. So first of all, I'd like to pass to Guy for his presentation, and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Guy. Okay, thanks very much, Susie, and, and welcome everybody. Nice to, to see you all, although I can't see you, but virtually see you, and, and thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to share my screen, and um, then we'll take you through a little presentation. So hopefully you can, you can see this. Susie, can you see this? Susie? Yes, I can see it. Can you see this? Yeah, okay. Great, thanks. Um, so, future of hospitality design. I mean, that's a that's a big subject and it's a big question. Um, and I think that you know, there's so much. Oops, sorry, I skipped one slide. Um, there's so much that can be talked about. We, we do have. I only have seven minutes, and I could talk about this for hours, to be frank. And Stefan and I could could certainly. Um, have a good old yarn over a few a few bowls of wine talking about this. But I, I'm going to kind of break my presentation down into a few areas. I'm going to talk about the values 
our values as, as a brand, uh, because I think those values are actually very important when it comes to, to design and, and the future and, and you know where we see our industry going post COVID nineteen. And then going to talk about um, biophilic design uh, being instrumental, I think, in in, in what we do, uh, sustainability, nature, and, and light, and then localization. So these are our six values. Um, local sensitivity, global sensibility, uh, crafted experiences, emotional hospitality, fun and quirky, pioneering wellness, responsible and caring. And I won't go through all, all, all of the in detail um, because of the time, but you will sort of see that there's nothing here about money. There's nothing here about, um, you know, you know, trying to, to grow our business or, or be the leader or anything like that. It's all really to do with the environment, the culture, the community, giving back um, and creating incredible experiences for our guests. So I'll get on with the, the kind of real, the crux of, of the presentation um, and talking about, you know, the future of hospitality design. So biophilic design, um, you know, for those of you that, that no, I'm sure most of you do, but biophilia is, is something we're talking a lot about these days. It's all about bringing a connection um, to nature, uh, in our design, in, in our workplaces, um, and in our, in our spaces. So these are just some images of how you can do that. I think that, I mean, it, it's been proven that, that you know, there is such a, a thing as a health benefit from being in touch with nature. I mean, the Japanese call um, call it forest bathing, um, where you actually you don't physically bathe in water. You walk in the forest, and and the 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 physical benefits of being in touch with nature, both from the obviously the the oxygen point of view, but also the being grounded and, and the sunlight that you know the vitamin D that we all need and everything is very beneficial um, physically, but also I think emotionally. You know, seeing green nature, we all love it, right? I mean, less hardscapes, more softscapes, um, and, and bringing that into the environment, uh, whether it's opening up the outdoors or whether it's actually physically bringing nature into, into an indoor space like you see in the middle shot here. Sustainability in design. Uh, you know, this is actually a shot of a, of a mushroom hut. Um, the, the, you know, it's, the wood is all made out of recycled wood. Um, it's in, kind of in the shape of a mushroom, and we're growing our own mushrooms um, that we then use in our in our restaurants. So I think that you know sustainability is is critical in this day and age. Um, it was talked about so much even before COVID nineteen, but even more so now post COVID nineteen. And I think that it's critically important for people to think about the environment, think about their impact on the environment, um, think about you know not only plastics but but so much more than that. How do we give back? How do we how do we reduce, reuse, recycle, and and so on? So, a prime example is you know the millions and millions of water bottle plastic water bottles that end up in our oceans. So, you know we bottle all of our own water in all of our own hotels. And then you can kind of turn that into a fairly cool design statement as well um, by localizing the, the bottle and having a little cross lid or something like that that really makes sure that you know you are you know you are staying um, kind of cool while also obviously doing something pretty 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 good. So you know, likewise, you could turn bottles into into lampshades. Um, filament light bulbs here, which are so much better as we know, and then you know old wine bottles. Um, into lab shades. So there's all sorts of things that you could do to, to not only be sustainable, but then make that a cool design element and design feature. Deep sea cooling. This is a hotel we're building in, in Ibiza, um, and we're using a cooling system that is actually going to be uh, underwater. And um, then the operational cost savings, not to mention you know the environmental impact, is, is going to be huge. So you know, technology, use technology wherever possible. Um, solar paneling is, is obvious one. Um, wind generation and, and here, sea and wave generation of power is also, I think, critical in moving forward. Nature and light. Um, nature itself, as I mentioned, biophilic design is, is critical, but then using light, shadow lines, um, bringing light into spaces, natural light, less less UV light, less, um, 
you know, um, artificial light in spaces. We, it's been proven as well that artificial light is, you know, kind of gives people headaches and it's not good for you. So I think using natural light and bringing that into the space is critically important as, as well as bringing nature into the space. Um, and then obviously using light itself for mood setting and from an architectural point of view. You know, you can build a beautiful building, design a beautiful building, but if the lighting is wrong, it really stands out. And vice versa, you can actually use incredible lighting to turn a sort of an ugly duckling into a swan um, from a building perspective. Um, I, I won't go through all of this for sake of time, but you know, when, when you when you think about the future of design, how do you incorporate everything that I'm talking about? How do you bring the light in, the natural light, um, open up views, uh, reduce the number of VOCs that you have, think about your ventilation system, and, and just make sure that, that the design also is good for you. Oops, oops that's my time. It's also good for you, um, good for the environment, good for, for you know, the, the hosts and staff working in there, as well as, as obviously the guests. And then localization. So for us, it's critically important to localize. You know, we don't believe in, in you know, importing Italian marble to our hotel in, in Fiji, as you can see by, by this photo, um, as an example, and making sure that, you know, we use natural woods, we use natural materials, natural stone. Um, here, the photo on the far right is a new hotel we, we, we're building soon to open, actually very soon to open, in Shaharut in the deserts of, of Israel. And all of this natural sandstone has been quarried um, from the local surrounding area. Um, and, and the wood that's used in the Bhutan shot in the middle there is obviously also locally sourced. So localization, um, not only in design, but also in, in the way you interact with the community, employment, procurement, um, giving back, um, doing good, we have a sustainability fund in all of our hotels that, that takes 0.5% of all revenues and, and we plug that into, uh, into some sustainable localized um, element that's going to benefit the community. So localization, I think, is also critical in design of the future. Um, let's make sure that we, you know, we're, we're, we're not freighting so much around the world. Let's make sure that we're, we're benefiting the communities where, where we're putting up our hotels and that we're really making sure that we give back. So um, it was short. It was seven minutes. I apologize. I could go on for hours, as I said, but thanks very much. I really appreciate it. And I will stop sharing now so that we can, uh, we can move on. Thanks so much, Guy. That was great. Um, so I'm going to now pass over to Stefan, who's joining us actually from Bangkok this evening uh, for his presentation. Over to you, Stefan. Thank you, Susie. Uh, good evening, everyone. Great pleasure to, to be there and uh, have this uh, conversation about the future of hospitality design. I'm on screen there, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, um, as guys say future, future, future is already a term. And I, I quite like these two uh, quotes from two important uh, persons that have shaped the world but are not necessarily called uh, designers. So the future depends on what we do on, in the present. And the further backward you can look, the further forward you can see. About uh, the, the hospitality, yeah. What is there more kindly than the feeling between us and guests? And about design is a while. You will find a lot of definition about design, but I quite like this one, again, not from a designer. And it's quite already very um, um, sustainable because you do what you can with what you have, where you are. And I really love it. Okay, the present. Uh, the, the dramatic crisis we go through uh, with the COVID, uh, unprecedented and, and never, happened, uh, never happened before, uh, forced us to sit back and, uh, and look at, at our planet and look at, on the big pictures. Uh, what, what are the things that we must improve? Before we have some sign of a certain congestion about the quantity that we was handling. And we were thinking that this guy was crazy to, were well, crazy sorry, to be there, but in fact, he was very passionate to wait his turn to take the picture. So to cope with this high demand, we, we create things big and that uh, reach a scale that we can question are we really at a scale that connect with the neighborhood that we want to connect with? 
and the neighborhood on those bases, is it ready to connect with us? Uh, I don't know, it's a little sketch to probably we need to move from what is on the left to what is on the right, where we maybe the hotel may start to um, break in small part, extend, and we have two examples of that in the, in the design uh, story. Um, so if we want a long-term strategy for growth, we can see that in, in destination, you have always this uh, phenomenon of going up and going down. And interestingly, uh, you have a, a very a curve that we have all seen this curve of the COVID that basically say that if you have a too big number uh, in the proportion of, uh, of a system, an ecosystem, you, you have a problem. So you need to find something, protective measure of this system, and you can replace uh, this uh, by tourist destination consumer and touristic system capacity to offer an optimal experience is what you, you need to do. You need to find a way to uh, protect your threshold um, for quality. This one is the same curve for the climate change. If we, if we look uh, at the um, needs of uh, the hierarchy of needs that the human uh, need, we can see that generally the traditional hospitality was taking care of the bottom part. See, uh, physiological needs, safety needs. And more we, we evolve in the history, the modern hospitality have started to, to look uh, higher and probably the future will go uh, to the self-actualization uh, to reach a more spiritual purpose. Same with this COVID crisis. It seems that one of the best assets that we have is our immune system. It basically, everything that can sustain and uh, consolidate our immune system will make us better for the next crisis because we will probably have a next crisis. So it's quite nice to realize that all these things, us in the hospitality industry, we can provide that in a better way. We have all the infrastructure to provide these things in a better way. So it's quite interesting that we uh, focus on those objectives during the, all the guest journey to make sure that at every touch point that we have with our guest journey, we provide the maximum of this, um, this, uh, this support. Because we move from a, a quite simple relation between one owner and a, and a guest, where uh, you have an operator and a team of consultants, so you have a lot of people involved, but probably to elevate even the experience, we will go with uh, new expertise that we can start to see in certain, uh, in certain um, brand of hotel, where you have an anthropologist, you have an author, conductor, artist, choreographer, illusionist. This expertise can bring us something we, we, because we are in an evolution from something to something else. An evolution of the travel, the way we travel. An evolution from commodity to more elevated experience that can be sometimes grounded. Luxury will be always crafted. That I believe that it's a, it's a must and crafted for the detail, but crafted for the way you elaborate a project and uh, the long process to reach something that it's, a, it's a, more than a, a space. It's something that connects you with the sky. It's, it's a project from Lake Bunag. Um, this one, you know, the way to connect, it's, uh, it's the, the elevated sophistication, generosity of the designer. In a more um, uh, basic one, my basic is not the word, sorry, uh, a more um, straight to the point, uh, uh, generous by the, by the air, by the sea, by the, the view, by the, the space. I love this project that uh, is the data in, um, in, uh, in Langkawi because you, in the middle between these two buildings, and one is the main building and the one that is the beach, you have probably uh, 50 villas uh, that you don't see. And it's, uh, it's so much respect with the site. Uh, and is, I think is an example by Kirill. It's an example that we must uh, follow and, uh, and, um, and, and stick to it because it's, we don't need to go to that. We don't need to go to that. Um, so yes, uh, probably we need to have a thicker facade that allow us to to develop um, uh, a relation with the, 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 the landscape that can come vertically as we densify projects. Um, yes, engineering, sorry, I see my time is going out. Um, engineering, I think we need also re-engineer our building, especially in the, in the city where most of the time, we, uh, the most valuable space and the space that can connect us with the, the, 
the sky is taken by engineering. So uh, when it can be a marvelous space to connect with the sky. Probably we will have some evolution uh, to look with um, uh, um, convertible space that will allow us to uh, make best use. You will have curated space, uh, but the historical destination will still be something that people will connect very easily uh, to it because you will have the story behind it. Uh, I hand over to you. My time has expired. So much, Stefan. That was great. And we now have everyone with us. Welcome, Annie. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to have a bit of a chat now, but I'd also like to encourage the audience to please send in some questions because once we've had our uh, discussion here, we're going to open up to the audience for questions. So um, obviously tonight's topic of conversation is about the future of hotel design, hospitality design, and obviously the travel experience more broadly. So my first question is quite broad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to direct this towards Guy and Stefan first, who are obviously answering from different perspectives, Guy more from an operations point of view and Stefan more from a design point of view. But I'd like to know how you see, um, you know, the future of design and operations of hotels and how that's going to change and what we can expect to see in the near future as opposed to perhaps more longer term. Uh, Guy, maybe, do you want to tackle that first? Yeah, thanks, Susie. Um, it, I mean, it's a huge question, obviously, because th th there's so much that's happening right now. I, I just got back um, more from a trip to, to Turkey and I'm fortunate enough that I have done a few trips. I was in Paris and I was in Portugal um, earlier on in these, these last, this last month or so. Um, and, you know, things are different, right? People are, are very wary and, and, and hotel companies are having to, to spend a lot of extra time and energy on, on cleanliness and sanitizing. And um, there's a lot more plastics out in the world. This is, this is one thing that I'm really upset with because you know, in our desire to sanitize everything and, and try to minimize the risk, everything's being wrapped in plastic, um, which is something that we were trying to get rid of only only sort of a year ago. Uh, now we're creating so much more plastic in the world. Um, but it, it, is, it is different. And I think that people, you know, and it won't go away in a hurry and people will start to think about this in, from a designer's point of view and, and certainly from an operating point of view. So, so you know, my question, I'll let Stefan speak to design, but from my point of view, yeah, we're having to think about the way that we operate. We're having to think about a sanitization. We've had to implement all sorts of new policies. We've had to, um, you know, go with with new hygiene standards. Um, we've we've had to talk about this publicly. We, you know, most hotel companies have come out with messages come out with some kind of guarantee, cleanliness guarantee, and, and so on. You see, you see a lot more stickers, labels on, on, on things, and whether it's the hotel room door or but it, it's a bathroom, or you're losing amenities out, out, of, out, of, out of hotel rooms. You know, people aren't doing mini bars anymore. And I think it's actually very, very sad. I think it's super sad. Um, because ultimately, you know, COVID-19, we'll just learn to live with, like we have done all of the other viruses and all the other illnesses in this world. And we'll get, you know, we'll get over this. Uh, but what's going to change for the long term? I mean, we've had nothing that's hit us to the extent that this has hit us since World War II. So there will be some major change that will happen in the long term. People aren't shaking hands. People aren't hugging and kissing anymore. And, you know, we're social human beings and we need that. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but but certainly there is dramatic change right now. Um, you know, the plastic screens on, on, on reception desks of hotels are, are awful. Taxi drivers uh, or taxi cabs everywhere, plastic screens. Um, you know, when you go into to a shop and you try and get assistance, they're wary of, of, of coming close to you um, and, and sort of helping you, which... You know, which I think is really sad. And our industry, the hospitality industry, is exactly that. It's, it's about being hospitable. It's about interaction. It's about people. It, it's about, um, you know, giving and, and smiling. And, and how can you smile when you've got a face mask on? Mm. You know, so it, it's a real shame. Um, and, and I think 
that from my perspective, we're, we're a lot better off than many hotel companies because most of our results are spread out. They're small. They're open to the environments. Our restaurants are open air. Um, we have freestanding villas. We don't have hotel rooms and, and buildings and blocks. So by nature, we can physically distance. We have less people. We don't kind of do the big hotel buffet breakfast anyway. So we're a little bit more fortunate than others. And, and I think it's, it's going to be a shame because a lot of people will have to change the way that they operate, which also affects their business model. So that was a very long answer, but it was such a big question. But Stefan, over to you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Guy. Uh, definitely. Uh, Go ahead, Stefan. Definitely. Uh, yeah, a uh, big question. And uh, I think we, we, we are still under the shock, and we have the first Im immediate safety measure that must be taken. For example, uh, on us in Accor, we have a measure that called all safe that have been uh, basically set with the Bureau of Editas to make sure that basically uh, sanitization are, are, are made in a, the safest way possible in all our hotels. So that is a first uh, reaction. But after that, that will become um, um, part of the norm. Like uh, before, we have the ADA norm. We will have, it will become part of the norm. But we may reach, uh, we may. It, it, it's, we need to have after all this uh, resolution of the crisis, we will probably need again take a step back because, for example, I'm not a biologist, but I suspect with the amount of uh, sterilizer, um, uh, let's say alcohol 70 uh, degree that we put in the environment because we want to sterilize everything, we make a ground for a super bacteria. So I, I, probably these things we need we need do it because it's an emergency, but after we need to think about how we do next. And one of the things that people will do now is travel. They will probably not take time to go to take a plane again. They will use other means of, uh, of transportation, car, and all things. They will more localize their first uh, going out to just see how it's filled. But I, I also think that we need to consolidate the promise and the experience that we offer to them because they will be more demanding. They will take more risk to come to our hotel. So definitely the expectation level will be higher. So we, we, we need to, to foresee that, to, to consolidate our asset. And we uh, sometimes uh, the difficulty is, um, uh, so we have a slowdown. So maybe it's the time to, to, to consolidate our asset. But uh, yes, um, it's very difficult to foresee the, the, the future. But definitely, I think in the human history, when you have something good, you stand. So I think, Quality is one of the aim, as you say, um, um, guy about the, the the plastic. We need to take, uh, as we are big player, we need to take some commitment. Uh, uh, Sebastian Mazan take a commitment last year to say that we will finish use of plastic in our hotel at the end of this year. So maybe we will have some delay, but commitment like that that basically allow us to uh, fix some uh, some uh, some aim. And, uh, and basically communicate about it, challenge uh, the, our competitor and ourselves, uh, create um, uh, participation of the hotel hospitality industry with, um, uh, with a legal institution that basically define the standard to, to improve these things for the, for the, for the good of, the, of the, the industry, because the industry is, is one of the components of the society. So, um, Yes, sorry, I, I don't want to take too much. No, those, those were both really great answers. Um, I think I'm going to come back and maybe unpack some of those in a bit more detail, but I'd like to ask Annie uh, maybe about what Collar is doing to anticipate and also respond to, you know, some of these changing needs of travellers and hotels. Can you comment on that for us? Well, I think um, from the perspective of um, Stefan and also from Guy, they are giving us a lot of um, feedback about what we should do as a manufacturer. I think we've been trying to understand what the hospitality business in the future is all about, how you operate and how you're going to design. And that, that has a lot of conversation for us to carry out with our partners like them. And um, there has been a big drive of touchless product, I think just from the initial standpoint is everybody is very careful about not touching surfaces and um, how do we reserve um, environment at the same time. I think there were like two big topics like how to keep safe, um, having like not touched surfaces easily and also like um, what Guy has been touching on sustainability. How do we help the environment and create a social impact um, back? 
from the manufacturer standpoint. Um, with that, that has been a paramount of our company as well. So I, I thought I was really quite felt quite close to those two topics that the two gentlemen were talking about. Um, and also this conversation with the manufacturer, with all these designers and operator has also pushed us to think beyond what we've been doing today and also like what are the new materials that we should be thinking about? How do we use um, products? How do we create products that are able to co um, contribute back to the society? Like there's something that it's within the Kohler company as an internal process called the design for environment. And I'll touch that maybe probably later with you know, some of, I was looking at some of the questions that you were asking. I thought that could be something that we can bring up to let the audience and also the operator and our design friends know what we are, what we're doing behind the back. Um, but just to summarize, I think um, sustainability is a big, is a big um, ask from a lot of our operator friends. Um, and design people are really looking at localization, looking at materials and not shipping stuff across and um, just, just touching base with what is available in the local market. And the future of hospitality to me is a lot more open space given that you know, this pandemic has really given people a different perspective, how to stay healthy, how to you know, have great well-being, you know, exercise more. Um, and, and, and also, like, you know, this, this time that we are all not able to travel outside of the country, I, 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 we see a lot more domestic traveling. So I, I thought there would be a lot more you know, domestic kind of resort being created, getaways you know, for you know, the guests in the future. Um, I also think there will be a lot of upgrades from um, some of the hotels uh, just to make sure that they are up to speed with some of the expectation like what um, Stefan was talking about, like maintain, maintaining that standard and people would travel into their hotel feel safe about that. I think that's the few things that we were thinking together and to support our um, design partners and operator. Mm, interesting. So I'm going to dig a little bit deeper with the next question. I'd really love to hear from Guy and Stefan about what they think about, um, you know, what changes might be happening in terms of public versus private space in hotels and balancing uh, interactions, personal interactions with guests with potential ongoing social distancing rules. Um, maybe if each of you could comment on that. Sure, Susie, thank you. Um... Yeah, two good questions, and I, I sort of touched on it earlier. I, I'm, I feel a little bit sad um, at the moment, I must say, because there is so much pushback uh, in our industry um, from that human interaction that we need. There's, as I said, I've traveled a little bit recently, and, you know, you get confronted by somebody on a reception desk with a I think we've lost. Oh, don't touch me or don't shake my hand. And, and, you know, for me, that's really sad because, like, it's all about love and, and sharing and caring and, 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 you know, being in this together and being able to see a beautiful smile and, and the eyes of, 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 your, of your, you know, your, your staff member um, that's serving you. So I, I think it's really sad and I think there's going to be a clear divide. I think there's going to be the bigger hotel companies that are surviving on, on corporate accounts that maybe have, um, you know, three, four, five hundred rooms that have to follow sort of certain protocols, um, and that's more process driven. And then you're going to have, and so therefore you will see a lot more screening. You will see a lot more um, touchless interactions, right? Checking in, checking out, for example. You know, you don't have to do it anymore. You can do it on your phone and you can use your phone to go and open the hotel room. You will see some mini bars and all the amenities, all the beautiful little extras that we used to have in hotel rooms will start to disappear because, you know, they don't want to have to sanitize all of those things. Um, so there'll be a little bit more of a, a sort of a, a going back to basics. Um, but then I think you're going to have um, almost a complete opposite. You, you're going to have, and I know that, sorry, I run my business this way, where... I want to make sure that we've got that interaction. I want, I want to make sure that we keep our guests and the host safe. So, of course, we're all wearing uh, 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 you know, hotels, everyone's wearing masks. But there's no plastic screens anywhere. Um, 
We're continuing to have minibars in the rooms, but we just have to go through extra sanitization processes. We're continuing to have all the beautiful amenities in the rooms. We're continuing to um, have those social interactions. We're continuing to have get-togethers around a fire and do a little fire ceremony um, with the general manager at each of our hotels. We're doing you know, whatever ritual and ceremony we might have at each one of our properties. Because I think it's those moments, those moments of truth, that little magic, that at the end of the day is what life is all about. And I think that you'll see, I mean, I kind of categorize people into three. The cavalier people that don't really care like me, okay, that will travel anywhere without wearing a mask. And then we, we, we take our life into our own hands. Um, and then you'll have the people that are so worried about everything, they'll stay at home. So they're not going to travel anywhere, and they'll just hunker down. And then you've got the mass, right, the majority of people out there that want to continue with life, and want to take precautions, which is, which, is, which is totally correct. So we need to make sure that they all feel safe, and all of our hosts, all of our staff feel safe. But at the same time, they can still have that magic and that beauty of, of, of a hotel guest experience. So I think that... Um, we need to keep that. We need to keep those moments of truth. We need to keep that, that magic, that beauty. We need to keep those interactions. Um, so I don't plan for our hotels to go touchless in, in, in many areas at all. You know, I, I don't really want a lot of technology. I want a human interaction. I want a smile. Um, I, I, want, uh, I want, you know, maybe an elbow bump if you can't do a handshake for a while. Um, but, you know, hopefully the handshake will come back in, in, in a bit of time. Um, but certainly eye contact is important you can do that even with a mask on um and and a conversation you know if, if, if everything's touchless and if you're doing it all by yourself you're not having a conversation with anyone but you know you want to go and you want to have a conversation you want to talk to the locals you know the reason you go to vietnam or wherever is to is to dig deep on the culture and you can get so much of that from the people uh, but yet if you're not talking to anybody if you're not interacting with anybody then you might as well stay at home so i'm a little bit of, of, a, of a cynic um, but also a realist and understanding that at the end of the day, business is business and everybody has to feel safe. Do you have any thoughts on that, Stefan? Maybe relatively quickly, because I think we want to save a little bit of time for some questions from the audience. Oh, okay, I'd try Sorry. to use that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yes, I, look, I am like guy. Our industry is about uh, human uh, interaction, so it's, it's, it's very depressing. So. Yes, we need to provide safety and security. So we need to take primary measure. But I would like that we spend more energy instead to only focus on protection that will basically make us live a life that we don't want to live. So I think we, we need to, as I was saying before about the human system, it seems that, come on, we come up with a million years of evolution. So we are quite designed to fight virus. Can we, us, as institutions that take care of people, we, we control the air that people breathe, we control the water that people water breathe, we control the food, the nutrition, we, we can develop and, and, and be best at that to help. We have, a, sorry, I forget about the well-being and the fitness and the program that we can basically like uh, you prepare an athlete. Athletes are not afraid. I don't think a good athlete is too much afraid about the corona because he has a big chance that his immune system, because he's in good shape and he's a, um, he, he have a less chance. If we look at the, the statistic, it's quite... Uh, uh, so uh, we need to keep reason and stop to be too afraid because otherwise we start to have a reaction that they are completely inappropriate. So I, I really believe that we need, yes, it's a crisis, we need to go through, but now we need to say, what do we do to make it best, to go, go back to human interaction and all these things. And, and we, we, are, we are beautiful um, individuals, the human have always uh, come back with solutions. So I think let's focus on how we can do better. Uh, I know a part of us must take care of the safety. I completely agree, we must. But, um, and just to answer about your question about the collaboration with, um, with manufacturer, I really think that yes, it's a lot of opportunity. It's a lot of opportunity for manufacturers to collaborate with, um, um, with the industry like us because we have a need today of things that cannot be made by the traditional way to produce design. We need to have a manufacturing process and uh, just a number, Think about all these mid-scale rooms that will be probably empty for one year, two years. So it's a huge, huge, huge potential there 
for industry to collaborate with um, with the hospitality to take care of that because the owner of those properties they are bleeding they 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 they, they, they cannot amass much so we need to come back with smart solution to help this uh, this going to process that are positive not thank you and just say no 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 yes yeah, sorry yeah. <laughs> no that was great thank you and i've got so many other questions for you i feel like we could chat all night but i've got a couple here from the audience i think we have time for a couple um so i'm just going to try and read these out um uh, so one of them is I don't know who it's directed to, but your hotel projects are spread across some very exotic locations. How does keeping a sense of place factor into your design process? So maybe, Stefan, if you'd like to answer first from a design perspective, and then we could get Guy to comment um, from an operations point of view. Is that okay? Yes, and how to keep the sense of place on remote location? I'm not so sure I get why the, the question. Um, how do you how do you factor a sense of place or a sense of locality, I suppose, into the design process? How do you do that in so many different locations around the world? Oh, it's uh, it's crucial, and we don't do always best because sometimes you you do a, a I don't know a resort in the middle of an island you that have never been uh, as no story. Uh, yeah, you, you need to come with something that is, is connected with the place. So sometimes it's just about the, the humble, be humble about what you create to, to just belong to the place because you fulfill the, the breeze, the shadow. The, the basic things about architecture is that normally architecture, you go there and yeah, yeah, we would like in the compulsory, you know, in the contract, architect must spend uh, one week uh, camping on the, on the site. So they understand the site and they, they, they do a property for us. Unfortunately, we are not yet geared to do this type of thing. But I think we must basically, based on our history, our experience, because we do so many properties, instead to redo again, 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 use the experience and the, the knowledge about how we can improve to, to make those properties better. Because we, we focus on what makes the difference. Because it's, it's the difficulty is to identify when we do a project, because we have not a limited project, uh, budget, uh, how, how to identify where we can make the, the investment um, uh, the best return. Not only from a, from a pure uh, profit point of view, because we need to satisfy that, but from the, 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 the uh, fulfilling the promise that we make to our guests. Yeah, sorry. No, that's great. Thank you. And I think, Guy, you already talked a little bit about locality in your presentation, so maybe what I might do is um, find another question for you. Um, okay. uh, yeah, so there's one here. When considering the overall design of hotels and biophilic elements that you talked about in your presentation um, and the use of materials, as a hotel operator, to what extent would you consider the maintenance aspect uh, and the and obviously the sensible uh, the operational sensibility when you're making those decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. Totally makes sense, and it's a really good question actually because you know obviously maintenance of a um, you know standard sort of square thirty square meter room um, floor after floor after floor is a lot easier than it is when you're building organic villas that are kind of in on rocks and you've got nature and it's open air and you've got nature and you've got weather and all of that sort of stuff. So it's a really good question. However, I think that ultimately, if you're using the right materials in the right location, so that's why back to the, the prior question, localization, um, which was also a really good question, sense of place is really important. Those materials should stand stand the test of time, um, and also then I think maintenance is really about constant, ongoing maintenance. I mean, I, I think that you can't, you know, you can't let maintenance get on top of you. You've got to stay on top of maintenance with any material, um, even local materials. And I think that that's critical to to ensuring the longevity of of the design. Um, but you know the. The, the balance of um, biophilic design, localization design, material design that we're talking about, and maintenance has to be there. And I think any good architect that understands that, and Stefan said, you know, send the architects to a site and, and live, you know, camp for a week, is exactly what they should do. 
so that you understand that. And then obviously you have to look at the seasonality because you might camp there for a week during high season. Then what happens in off season? So, you know, if in off season it rains at 45 degrees, then you have to factor that into your design. Um, so it's all about knowledge, uh, experience, and really understanding the destination, the location, um, factor that into your design. But that should not prevent you from bringing in biophilic design. That should not pre prevent you from, from localization. That should not prevent you from using local materials. In fact, on the contrary, you can still do all of that and probably even ben you know, benefit from that while still having a property and a design that, um, that um, you know, is not going to be too all-encompassing from a maintenance perspective. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any more time. No, it seems like we're out of time, sadly, because I feel like we could chat all evening. But thank you so much to the three of you for your time this evening and for your really insightful responses. It was uh, a pleasure for me, at least, to be talking about something other than COVID-19 for a change. So thank you all very much for joining us. And thanks well, to the audience thank for joining. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Ed. thanks thank for joining. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye then. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.